Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about side effects of anti-tubercular agents. What are the different types of anti-tubercular agents? We have mainly four types of first line drugs which are orally administered. The first one is a rifampin, second one is isoniazid, third one is pyrazinamide and fourth one is ethambutol. These four drugs can be remembered with simple code R I P E, right? So these are the first line drugs which are orally administered. We have another drug streptomycin, which is given by IV root, and again it can be used as first line agent. These drugs are given in combination in order to produce an efficient treatment for tuberculosis. That's why these drugs are indicated by a single letter. To easily understand the prescription. So these four drugs are in the different abbreviation. Let us rearrange them in a different order. Now the first drug isoniazid is indicated with the letter H and ethambutol with the letter E, rifampin with the R and pyrazinamide with letter Z. So we can remember these drugs simply as H. H is the unit for frequency so with these drugs, the frequency of tuberculosis can be reduced. That's why these drugs are used as first line agents. Isoniazid, ethambutol, rifampin and pyrazinamide. Except the isoniazid, we can find a single letter within the name of the drug. And isoniazid is the isonicotinyl hydrazide where H indicates it is a hydrazide. But nowadays, due to the development of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, more number of drugs were added. For instance, fluoroquinones can be used for the treatment of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. So today in this video, we are going to discuss the side effects of these anti-tubercular agents and how easily we can remember. These abbreviations are somewhat important in reading the prescription because these drugs are given in combination for effective treatment of tuberculosis. For instance, we can observe a drug regimen like this. The first term HRJE indicates this is the initial phase of treatment and the second term HR indicates this is the continuous phase of treatment for tuberculosis. So here initial phase consists of four drugs which are indicated as HRJE, isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazinamide and ethambutol. Continuous phase includes two drugs, isoniazid and rifampin. Similarly, the initial phase is prescribed for two months, which is indicated by the prefix two. And continuous phase is prescribed for four months, again indicated by the prefix four. Within the initial phase, all the drugs are given daily. But in the continuous phase, these drugs are given three times a week, which is indicated by a subscript three. In this way, by using these codes, we can easily analyze the drug regimen that is going to be used in the treatment of tuberculosis. So now let us see the side effects of these four drugs along with other second line agents which are used for the treatment of tuberculosis. First of all, let us see the common side effects of these anti-tubercular agents. So we have already discussed the four first line drugs, HERZ, isoniazid, ethambutol, rifampin and pyrazinamide. All these drugs commonly affect the liver resulting in the hepatitis. So all these drugs can produce inflammation of the liver and they can produce hepatotoxicity. Particularly they can elevate liver enzymes such as ALT, alanine transaminase and AST, aspartate transaminase. These liver enzyme levels are increased by use of these drugs for the treatment of tuberculosis. Even all these drugs can produce some hepatotoxicity. One of the drug isoniazid is having the more probability to produce hepatitis. So whenever this isoniazid is combined with other drugs, it can produce hepatitis. So because of hepatitis, we can observe few of the symptoms such as increased fatigue, weakness, and some nausea, abdominal pain, dark colored urine. If any of these symptoms are observed, it may indicate some hepatotoxicity. So liver functionality test should be done frequently in order to assess any inflammation and damage to the liver. 
Similarly, all these drugs commonly produce hypersensitive reactions such as skin rashes and sometimes even serious hypersensitive reactions such as Stevens-Johnson syndrome can be produced by these drugs. Now let us see the specific side effects of these four drugs. First one is the isoniazid which is indicated by the letter H. So here H indicates a hydrazide derivative. What is the important side effect of this drug? So here we can find the letter N within the name of this drug. This N can be remembered as neuropathy. So isoniazid is one of the drug which produces the neuropathy and it can produce some damage to the neurons resulting in peripheral neuropathy. So because of this peripheral neuropathy, isoniazid can produce some numbness, loss of sensation, weakness as well as pain at the hand and feet. All these symptoms can be observed with this isoniazid. And since this drug is used for longer periods, peripheral neuropathy is a common side effect observed in most of the patients. And the severity of these side effects are different in the different population. Those patients who are having a slow estilators, they will have a slow metabolism. Therefore, they will have more peripheral neuropathy due to elevated levels of isoniazid. Similarly, second drug is the ethambutol, which is indicated by the letter E. Then what is the important side effect of this ethambutol? Here the letter E can be remembered as this drug is going to affect the eye and again it produces neuropathy, but not the peripheral, it produces optical neuropathy. So this drug produces damage to the optic nerve, which results in optic neuritis. So again, this is an inflammation of optic neurons which results in loss of vision and particularly ethambutol produce decrease in the visual acuity and even it can produce color blindness. So particularly two colors are not differentiated. So the patients may have decreased red and green discrimination of the colors and even the patients may have blurred vision. Even irreversible blindness can be observed by this ethambutol. Third one is the rifampin, which is indicated by the letter R. So again, what is the side effect related with this rifampin? So here the letter R indicates this drug is going to produce some red to orange tinge to the skin. So red to orange shade can be observed on the skin as well as urine, even saliva and other mucus secretions. And particularly this side effect is observed with increased dose of rifampin, which produce some red to orange discoloration of skin, urine, saliva and sweat secretions. Similarly, another letter within this name of this drug is the F. So F can be remembered as this drug produce flu-like syndrome. So rifampin can produce some chills in the patients, increased cough and it can also produce some muscle weakness and increased fatigue in the patients. So these two are the specific side effects observed with the rifampin. It can produce some red to orange discoloration and it can produce flu-like syndrome. Along with these two specific side effects, this drug can also produce hepatotoxicity, thereby it can elevate the liver enzymes. Fourth one is the pyrazinamide, which is indicated by the letter Z. So here we can take the letter Z, which can be remembered as letter G. So G indicates this drug produce gout as one of the important side effects. So pyrazinamide can increase the uric acid levels resulting in the hyperuricemia. So it can produce uric acid crystals within the urine, which can block the joints at the hand and feet so that they can produce some gouty arthritis. So when this pyrazinamide is prescribed, the uric acid levels should be checked. And if the patient is already having any risk factors for arthritis, then this drug should be carefully used. The previous drug ethambutol can also precipitate the gout. So ethambutol can produce optic neuritis as well as gout as two important side effects. So these are the four drugs which are indicated by the letters H, G e, or Z. H indicates isoniazid which produce peripheral neuropathy. E indicates ethambutol which produce optic neuritis as well as it can precipitate gout. R indicates rifampin which produce red to orange discoloration of the skin, urine, saliva and sweat secretions. And it can also produce flu-like syndrome resulting in chills, cough, fatigue and muscle weakness. Finally, Z indicates pyrazinamide which can produce gout and hyperuricemia in the patients. 
Now let us see other anti tuber clara agents and what are their specific side effects. So for the treatment of tuberculosis, we can use the fluoroquinolones. Similarly, aminoglycoside antibiotics and other drugs like cycloserine, ethionamide and PAS, para amino salicylic acid. In this way, we have so many drugs which can be used as second line agents in the treatment of tuberculosis. So let us start with the fluoroquinolones. We can use few of the drugs like levofloxin, moxifloxin. These drugs are ending with the suffix floxacin, which indicates they are fluoroquinolones. So these fluoroquinolones mainly produce side effects that are related with the central nervous system. So they can produce some dizziness, vertigo, tinnitus, some buzzing noise in the ears. These are the side effects produced by fluoroquinolones. Second one is the aminoglycoside antibiotics. So we have few other drugs like streptomycin, kenamycin, capriomycin. All these drugs are ending with the suffix mycin. Similarly, another drug, amikacin. All these are aminoglycoside antibiotics. They can be used in the treatment of tuberculosis. And these drugs are given by IV route. Particularly, streptomycin can be considered as first line agent that can be given by IV route. Being aminoglycoside antibiotics, these drugs mainly affect the ear and they produce some ototoxicity resulting in loss of hearing, some tinnitus and vertigo. Similarly, they can affect the nephron resulting in the nephrotoxicity. So ototoxicity and nephrotoxicity are the two important side effects that are related with aminoglycoside antibiotics. And other drugs include cycloserine. Cycloserine can produce some neurotoxicity. This neurotoxicity can affect the central neurons resulting in increased convulsions, vertigo, tremor and ethionamide as well as another drug para amino salicylic acid both of these drugs can affect the thyroid levels resulting in hypothyroidism so they can decrease the levels of thyroid hormones such as t4 and t3 and another drug is the bedaquiline which is getting more importance in the treatment of tuberculosis this drug can produce some gastrointestinal side effects but one of the important side effect of this drug is that it can increase the qt interval within the ecg which may lead to fatal cardiac arrhythmias. So this drug should be carefully given in the patients already having any cardiovascular complications. So these are the various side effects of second line anti tuberculosis agents. So fluoroquinolones like levofloxin and moxifloxin can produce central side effects like dizziness, vertigo and tinnitus. Aminoglycosides like streptomycin, kenamycin, capriomycin and emicacin can produce nephrotoxicity and ototoxicity. Cycloserine can produce neurotoxicity resulting in convulsions, vertigo and tremor. Ethinamide and para salicylic acid can produce hypothyroidism and medaquiline can increase the QT interval within the ECG. In this way, we can easily remember the side effects of anti tuberculosis agents. The first line drugs are the HERZ. H indicates isoniazid, E indicates ethambutol. R indicates rifampin, Z indicates pyrazinamide. All these four drugs produce hepatitis, resulting in the increased levels of liver enzymes. But isoniazid specifically produce peripheral neuropathy. Ethambutol particularly produce optic neuritis. Rifampin mainly produce red to orange discoloration of the skin, urine and saliva. And it can also produce flu-like syndromes. And pyrazinamide mainly produce gout and hyperuricemia in the patients. So that's about the side effects of anti tuberculosis agents. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.